Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue, and we are going to be looking at Enneagram Type 4 today. We're going to be talking about something that comes from this book by Beatrice Chestnut, The Enneagram Guide to Waking Up, where she says that sometimes fours have a tendency to compare themselves with others. Before we get started, just a reminder that in the link below is a link to my website, TomLeHue.com where you can book Enneagram coaching appointments. You can also uh, find out information about the classes that I offer and the certificate programs and Enneagram coaching that are available, as well as uh, now an events page. <clears throat> if you would like me to come and speak to your staff or come and speak to your leadership team so that they can better understand themselves, um, I'd love to come and meet your people, whether that be live or in person or in Zoom, however I can help. All right, so let's let's get started today. Um, you know, I don't want to take a long time. I just want to talk about this one topic that, that she mentions uh, on page uh, 97 of her book. She says that uh, Enneagram type fours sometimes compare themselves with others or get caught in this comparison trap. I would say that it's probably more than just type fours. I would say that, you know, all of us do this to some degree where we kind of look over to the side and we see how other people are doing and then evaluate ourselves based on other people's performance. How are we measuring up? And I'm sure that fours, this probably bothers fours about themselves. They might not, they might think, I don't do that. I don't, I don't care what people think. I don't care what other people are doing. Um, and so it may be surprising for you to hear this for the first time and really think about it. Do I do this? Do I tend to compare myself with other people? I could see where, you know, threes, you would do the same thing. Because how do you know if you're being excellent or if you're performing well unless you're using some barometer, some gauge or some standard how other people are doing? Um, and then comparing yourself. And sixes under stress are going to look like this as well. You know, am I measuring up? Am I staying ahead of the curve? And so let's just, let's keep it about fours though today. This, this concept of comparing ourselves. You know, the first thing I think of when I think about this concept or this thought is every time I've done this it, it kind of leads to a negative result because either I'm going to compare my my work with someone else's or my abilities with someone else's and I'm going to feel either like um, I'm doing really great and I'm doing better than they are and people should know that and so that kind of leads to this pride which is a negative thing um, not that you can't be proud of your work but be proud of your work for its own um, accomplishment, not because it's better than somebody else's or it, it, it um, improves on what someone else has done. Um, or it could lead to, more commonly, a sense of discouragement. Like, wow, look at them. They are so much better as a leader or they're so much more talented as a speaker or a singer or so much more attractive than I am. Whatever it is, um, I'm going to tend to walk away from that either with pride or with discouragement, feeling like, well, what's the point? What's the point of me showing up? What's the point of me trying to do this when other people are far more talented, far more gifted, far more exceptional than I am? So I just know when I think about comparing myself, which we all kind of do this, um, it's going to lead to probably one of two negative kind of side effects, right? So let's see what she says about type four. She says, um, when you observe yourself as fours, you may notice that you have a comparing mind, um, a comparing mind. And, you know, I think part of this comes from that sense that like, I always think of fours as being dealt a hand, you know, that they can't win with, or that feeling that I've been dealt a hand. Everybody's been dealt a hand. Everybody's got all these cards. Look at my cards. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to win with this? I've got like a three, you know, a seven, I've got one Jack and I've got all these, you know, cards. I can't win with this. How am I supposed to win with this? That sense of looking around and seeing other people and seeing like they fit in, they seem to know, you know, what they want in life. They seem to, to, to be able to just live these mundane lives, talking about football and working at the grocery store, working at the office. And they seem to just be able to like get along with their family. And they seem to be, I know I'm hyper, uh, whatever. Um, but that's kind of the thought I have about fours is like, I've been dealt this hand, hypo stereotyping, hyper stereotyping. Okay, I'm painting with broad strokes, but it makes sense in my mind. And so I've got this hand of cards. I'm supposed to try to play this game. What's the point? I can't win this. I, I, I And so I look around at other people, you know, and they seem to 
be able to win and I have got this to play with. See if you are automatically comparing yourselves with what you perceive um, in others or perceive to be true of others or perceive their talents or their abilities or their way of relating to others. Look, they came from a normal family. It's interesting too that four sometimes who don't want to be normal, who would never stereotype themselves or communicate about themselves that they are normal or typical or basic or pedestrian or all these phrases it's it's interesting to me that a lot of times when i talk to fours like they really just want normal they want they wish they came from a normal home they wish they had a normal experience growing up they want to have a normal relationship a normal life all the things that we associate with being normal normal house normal job like they want the normal stuff but then like everything about them sometimes seems like they're resisting normal and that idea of like, I grew up in this dysfunctional home. I grew up with a father that yelled at me or a father that abandoned me. I grew up in a home where I never really felt loved or connected or we moved around so many times. I never really felt settled. I always felt like I was under a microscope. I always felt like I didn't fit in. Like as much as I wanted to have friends and belong, it always seemed like it was just impossible for me. It just didn't work for me. So automatically comparing yourself. What does this do? What does this do for you? When you walk into a situation and you automatically compare yourself, like other people seem to be relating well to this person, but how are they relating to me? Other pe This other person seems to, to walk in and people just make over them, but why don't they do that to me? What is it about them that's, what is it that's, and then look at the corresponding truth. What is it that makes them so ma amazing or special? What is it about me that's flawed or broken? And then how can I overcome that flaw or that brokenness and then be special or amazing myself? And just think, how much time do I spend on these kind, this way of thinking? And what is it really giving me? Is it, is it giving me the results I want? Is it moving me to a better place? Am I ending up in a place where I feel more content, more happy, more actualized, more uh, engaged with life, better able to relate to life? What is, it, what is it giving me to think like this? What is it costing me if I continue to think like this? And I know you probably, I don't know how you would change this, but it's just being aware and observing this tendency that I tend to walk in and look at the environment or look at the people or look at the relationships and then bring it back to me and somehow and say, but what does this mean about me? What is this saying about me? What is this communicating about me and my place and my, my, my point of connection and where I'm established? What does this mean about me? And I always say that twos, threes, and fours, you know, they have this general way of making things about themselves that the rest of us would think this is not about you. Like we're just having a meeting. How, how is us relating to each other in a positive way somehow indicating some kind of flaw about you? Just realize the rest of us in those situations are not going to be clear. We're not going to understand how us interacting in a positive way in some way indicates some negative thing about you. We're not going to understand that. And then when you feel all of this and you have a reaction to it, and maybe you get up and you leave or you say something sharp or, or uh, frustrated to the rest of us, we're going to scratch our heads and say, what's wrong with them? What, what got into them? And I think that leads to that feeling of being misunderstood, feeling like, um, you know, you don't fit in, you don't belong, you're not part of the group, which realize that so much of what we see in a four looks like you don't want to be a part of the group. I know you want to be a part of the group. You want to feel like you're connected, but so much of your actions and behaviors seems to differentiate you away from what you really want. We're confused. We're going to look confused and, you know, a lot of people might just stop relating. They might just kind of withdraw away from you and just kind of ghost you or blacklist you or put a red X on you, however you want to say it. But you may end up finding that you isolate yourself away from people by differentiating yourself away from people. And you might just ask yourself, is this really moving me toward the goal I want in life? And that's kind of always the question, right? Is like, what are my goals? 
what is it I really want to accomplish? And as soon as a four, you know, starts asking that question, you're kind of asking a three question, which is good. It's one of your wings. Like, what's my goal here? What's my aim? What's my intention? Is my behavior and my way of relating actually moving me toward that goal or away from that goal? If your goal is to connect with people and to have a community around you that loves you and supports you, is your behavior moving you in that direction or is it going to move you away? from that goal, at least in the minds and perceptions of the people you're trying to relate to. Okay, so uh, this means you likely contrast elements of yourself with what others have, do, and usually come out on the bottom. Or you usually come out like seeing yourself as something is not right, there's an imbalance, I don't have everything that I should, uh, I'm not being perceived right, I'm not being understood correctly, I don't have the advantage, I have the disadvantage. And you know, I mean, if I felt like that all the time, I'd probably look frustrated, I'd probably look melancholy, I would probably look a little bit disconnected and sad, and maybe even like the sexual four, I would look angry. I would look like, you know what, this isn't right, this isn't fair. Everybody is perceiving this other person in such a positive light, and I'm feel like I'm being perceived in a negative light, maybe I need to bring them down. Maybe I need to show everybody that that person isn't everything that, that they claim to be and they have feet of clay. So not only would I need to maybe work really hard to promote myself, but maybe I need to bring the other person down. And of course, the obvious thing in all of this to me is like, why does it matter so much how other people are perceiving you? Especially when you are a person who says, I don't care what people think. I've got to be true to myself. Well, then why so much energy focused all the time on how other people are perceiving you? And I get it. Maybe you're watching this video and you think, man, Dr. Tom, he just doesn't have a clue what it means to be a four. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I don't see things from that same perspective you have. I'm sure that I can't put into words exactly what this experience is like. I am not a four. I'm a seven. I'm way over on the other side and my goals are very different in life. I'm just telling you how my perception would be and how other people might be perceiving your interactions and your connections and your behavior. I'm sure I can't possibly get into your mind and see things the same way you do. Now that being said, remember I am an ENFP and a lot of the fours that I meet are INFPs. And so we share a lot in common, at least from terms of Myers-Briggs, about the desire for authenticity, the desire to uh, be individuals and to, to respect people's individuality and their authenticity. So a lot of things I might share with a typical four in kind of the, the at least from the Myers-Briggs perspective, if you are an INFP, and I know there's probably fours right now saying, oh my goodness, I'm not an INFP. Okay, let me just come back to the book. Sometimes it's better just to come back to the book. Okay, but whatever you feel, uh, whenever, whether you feel inferior or superior in your mind, notice that you're probably never coming out as being equal. Never coming out as having like this, uh, you know, this, this sense that everything is okay, that there's balance, and this is going to make you feel very imbalanced, right? Unbalanced, like things are not equal, things are not fair, things are not, okay. Uh, someone is always better or worse than you are. Someone has always got something you don't have, they're relating to others in a better way, they, they're being treated better or, you know, being perceived in a different way than you are. And just notice what that, just observe if that's true or not. To what degree is that true? What is it, what is it doing for me? And what is this, what is this um, impulse or this compulsion? Uh, how is it moving me toward people or away from people? How is it affecting, let's say it that way. How is this impulse affecting my way of relating to others in this world? Or what I focus my attention on? Okay, which there's your five wing. Why focus your attention on these things? Think about a five, like wanting to be unaffected, uh, wanting to stay in their own lane. Why would I care what other people think? Why would I care what other people are doing? This is what I like and this is what I'm gonna focus my attention on. I'm gonna reserve that energy for what I care about and what matters to me. There's your five wing, which is very healthy, very helpful for, for a four. 
five wing and a three wing. Other people are perceiving me on my exterior or my outside, not on my inside. And so your three wing is saying, like, be careful how you're coming across and how you're relating to people. You want to have these goals, but if you're relating to people from only this way of thinking, it might damage the very thing that you want and really keep you away from accomplishing what you really want, and what your goals really are. So take some time to think about your goals. Think about what is it I really want in life? What is it really I really want in my relationships? And am I afraid that if I would open myself up to that and actually let myself be happy, that it would all be ripped away from me? And you can see that if that is a dominant fear in your life, it might keep you from ever really being able to connect with people because there's a fear that if I did and I got too comfortable and I got too happy and I you know, was too functional that other people would just pull away from me and that would be so devastating, that'd be so damaging that I've gotta protect myself by isolating and pushing others away and like, well that's not gonna reach, you're not gonna maybe reach the goal you have. Um, okay, well let's see what else, let's finish this. Uh, you may tend to put a lot of focus on assessing people and feeling bad about being less than others um, or having, you know, not as good a deal as others have. And that alone could isolate you from people because if people pick up on that, you know, if we go always as a family, if we always go as a group and, you know, a lot of the interactions are somehow I got left out or somehow I didn't get as much as the other person or somehow uh, I'm not really cared about. You can see where the other people in your life are going to be like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, not again, here we go, always focused on how you're not being perceived correctly or how you're not being treated right. And, and if you're with like a one parent, like one of your parents is a one, you're probably going to get a good score for that like uh, you know knock it off you're being way too sensitive you and I mean just saying that is probably like bringing back all this kind of like uh, feelings of frustration and misunderstanding and last thing you probably need in that state is to be scolded as if you're being selfish or self-centered or self-focused or over you know focused on yourself and how you're being perceived but but uh, that's probably what the interaction might look like you know, at first you might have somebody moving close to you, running after you, chasing after you, you know, the twos or the nines. Oh no, she's upset. Oh no, he's upset. We need to make this okay. Are you all right? What can we do for you? And that might feel good. I mean, you're getting attention and you're, you're getting your worth and value affirmed and confirmed by well-meaning rescuers, but... What does it feel like all the time to be chased after by rescuers? You know, you stomp out of the room, you walk into the, you know, you, you go into your bedroom and then all these people come in. Are you okay? Is everything all right? What did I say? What did I do? Oh my goodness, please come back out here. Now, some of you are probably watching this saying, okay, Tom, that was the fair enough. That was me in my teenage years. That was me in middle school. That was me in, when I was a kid. But maybe some of these same patterns continue on with you as an adult. They don't, may not get lived out quite so exorbitantly as in your adulthood, but uh, maybe some of these patterns or this way of thinking might continue on if you're not careful. And it's, I'm not saying you're bad. I'm just saying that notice the rest of us would get exhausted. The rest of us would think, oh my goodness, it's so difficult maybe to have a relationship with this. I always feel like I have to walk on eggshells, like I'm going to upset you at any moment. I'm going to say the wrong thing and throw you into like this, like what? I didn't even know what I said. I don't even know what I did. Okay. Interesting. All right. So let's see here. Less than others. You probably often feel that others have good qualities that are missing in you. Um, and notice if you might attempt to maybe like peel those things away from others and apply them to yourself. Sort of like, well, maybe I should work harder at becoming like that. Or maybe I should work harder at looking like that. I see how those people are being perceived. I see how those people are being perceived and they look like they're standing out and they're getting attention. I'm going to I'm going to maybe try that on. I'm going to try this and that and 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 wear this and speak this way and and see if other people notice me and relate to and again Behind all of this is this need for other people to reflect back to you some message. Why that need so strongly? 
why that need so strongly for other people to communicate back to you something, your, your importance or that you matter or that you are unique or that you are different. Notice that in your, in, in, that your focus is on standing out in the minds of others, in the perceptions of others. Why is that so necessary? Because you struggle with worth and value. We struggle, you know, we all to some degree struggle with this, but dominantly twos, threes, and fours are struggling with where do I fit in the world? Where do I belong in the world? What do I do in the world? What, who am I? And what's so important about me? And what, what is it my, what's my contribution? Well, how do other people perceive me? And it's kind of like sonar that goes out, brrr, goes out into the world and it needs to be reflected back for me to feel okay. It needs to be reflected back in a certain way for me to feel okay in the world. And I need people to reflect back that I'm unique and I'm special and I matter and I'm different. And of course you are, of course you are special. You are different, you do matter. Every one of us is unique and special and I would say uh, from a Christian worldview, created in the image of God and have a ultimate destiny and importance in this world. Every baby that's born in this world matters. Every baby that's born in this world has a unique personality and every one of them has value and they haven't differentiated themselves from each other and they haven't done anything special. And some of them are not even loved by their family. Yet, which one of us would look at that child and say, oh, they don't have any worth? Because they're not perceived in a certain way by the people in their family, then they actually don't have any identity or worth. None of us would say that. Because the worth and value is intrinsic into our DNA. It's hardwired into us. God has made us in his image and each of us has unique value because of that, regardless of whether or not that's confirmed by the world around us. Now that's easy for me to say, I'm on the other side over here in the fear group. I'm not in the worth and value group. But, you know, nonetheless, it's good for you to interact with this way of thinking and to be challenged. I don't care where you land on this. I mean, I just think it's good for you to be challenged in your assumptions and challenged in your perceptions and challenged in your worldview. And if you disagree with me 100%, that's fine. It's okay. Um, again, individuality and, and authenticity. Be true to yourself. And this is my opinions, my views. Um, but let it challenge you. Let it challenge your way of thinking. You'll only come out better on the other side, more firmly established in your, your beliefs. Okay, last thing she says is, at times, you may get competitive and see yourself as better than others or needing to achieve or accomplish or stand out. You know, you can stand out by being nice, friendly, and kind, right? Like twos. You can stand out by being successful and by being an achiever, by looking great and fitting in like a three. Or you can stand out by not playing along with the rules like everybody else. The rules don't really apply to me. I'm a four or I'm an eight. The rule, or a five, I'm not even aware of it, but you can stand out. Let me say it this way. Think of twos as cheerleaders. They, everybody, oh, she's a cheerleader. Wow, she's so wonderful. She cheers everybody else on. If she wasn't here, she would be missing something. She gets her name on the board by being a cheerleader. Look at threes, like the football players, you know, the captain of the team, the varsity team. Oh, look at them stand out because they're so amazing and they're so successful and they get their name on the board for scoring touchdowns. And then look at the four. Um, how do you get your name on the board? How do you stand out? It might not be by being so kind and friendly. It might not be by accomplishing all of these goals and tasks and by being the best example of what everybody, what everybody admires. So how do you get your name on the board? That's an interesting question. Maybe we'll just end there. And is the way you're getting your name on the board, is it really working for you? Maybe it is, but maybe sometimes it hasn't. And uh, that's worth thinking about. All right. Well, as always, guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful to you. Hope it challenges you, encourages you, moves you toward a, uh, towards your goals for life. And as always, be present to life. And it's hard to be present to life if everybody else has something that I don't have or everybody else is perceived in a way I'm not. I have this idealistic vision of the way things should be. And if they're not like that, I can't really accept things the way they are. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.